Okay guys, so we've got a really fun video for you today because today we thought we'd give you a little behind the scenes tour of what it's like when we put on some old records and do some salsa dancing. Uh, I didn't know we were salsa dancing. This is a sewing video. Yeah. Okay guys, so I thought we'd give you guys a quick tour today and a little behind the scenes shot of uh, our little sewing empire. And so, <laughs> is that going to work out better? That's much better. Right, sorry about that. That's Brain doable. Freeze. Okay, so anyway. Uh, basically, we get a lot of questions uh, from our videos and um, social media and um, uh, comments and, and whatnot about um, kind of if we have so many sewing machines, where do we keep them all? And um, do we have dedicated sewing rooms? And how do we store all of our stuff? And it, uh, it seems like we have multiple uh, video uh, backdrops for both of our different YouTube channels. and. Are we in a studio? Do we have a rented space? Is this our home? These are all the kind of the questions that we get. And, uh, you know, today we thought maybe we'd try to answer some of those. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I also see a lot of questions on Facebook, uh, different social media groups, quilting forums, uh, from various people asking how you organize your space, mm -hmm. how do you store your fabric, how do you store your thread, uh, what do you do when you have so many rulers? Um, so today we're going to kind of show you how we do it and what works for us. And maybe you can pick up a couple tips and hopefully help you in your spaces as well. So Yeah, for yeah. sure. And, and really, this is just what works for us. We've put right. a lot of thought and energy and time and a fair bit of money uh, bit. Over, the, over the last year or two uh, trying to get a good setup for us that works for us because we both like to sew and both have our own sewing spaces. And we have a lot of sewing machines, and that's kind of the whole point of this whole, uh, you know, enterprise. So, exactly. um, but what works for us works for us, and right. you know, we just want to hopefully um, share what we have. Maybe you can glean some information that might be useful for you as well. But really, your sewing space should be what what you feel and what you love, and what makes you happy. Because Absolutely. what we have makes us happy. But um, you know, I'm incredibly uh, organized and, and efficient and ergonomic. Um, you know, very strict wise. And for sure. Um, I have a, a mild case of OCD, and um, I, I use that to its fullest extent. Yep. You know, that may not work for you. Maybe you like a more homey environment. and Whatever works for you really is what you should be doing. We just want to share what we've got and maybe uh, try to answer a few questions along the way and, and see if we can share some. So does that sound good? Sounds great. Is that yep. better than salsa dancing? Oh, much better, you don't for want, sure. Nobody needs to see that. I, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Okay. I can sew. I so can salsa dance. <laughs> we basically have broken down um, this whole concept into three categories, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is uh, machine storage. That's what the most people want to know is where do we put them all. Right. Uh, the next thing is material storage and organization, like mm -hmm. um, well, like fabric and threads and, and whatnot. The tools, yeah. All to, of it. And all the doodads. Basically storage of everything. And we have a lot of doodads by now, 50 machines. For sure. And then the third category would be room layout and workflow. Um, and when, especially when you have two people, like in this, in our situation, where that we're both in the same hobby, doing the same stuff, and so we don't step on top of each other's toes, and we both have plenty of room to, to function. Um, workflow and, work, and room layout really is, is really important. Uh, yeah, for sure. We, we want to have a good time every time, and yep. be at peace and have fun every time we want to sew. Right? Yep, absolutely. So, yep. Okay, you ready to get started? Yes, where are we going to start? Um, probably makes sense to start in the front hallway where we store all of the cabinet machines. That sounds good. Okay. Let's do it. Let's get started. Okay, guys. So as far as machine storage goes, this is kind of the first step off into our you know, little problem here. So um, this is the hallway, the entry hallway to our home. And, um, you know, one of the comments and questions that we get um, on, our, uh, on our videos and, and social media is, well, we must have a, a grandiose, huge home uh, to have this, to be so lucky to have this space in this big hallway. And the reality is we, we're just normal people. We have a, a pretty small little cookie cutter home in a, in a little cookie cutter subdivision. And um, it's nothing special. But uh, for some reason, when they designed the layout of this home, um, they decided, um, for whatever reason, to put a 30-foot hallway in it. And it works out great for us because it gives us a place to stick all these, all these cabinets. So it didn't always look like this. You know, we started with one. Um, I think this parlor cabinet with the treadle uh, was our first kind of cabinet that we, that we got. It was the only one in here and it was always open and we came in here and we pulled a stool up and we sewed on it and it was great. And then we just got a couple more, a couple more and pretty soon they just started multiplying and now we're shoulder to shoulder machines and we can't really sew out here anymore because it's full. Um, but it makes a great, um, a great storage area for us and uh, we just are lucky to have it and we do the best with the space that we have. So. 
Um, also, we do kind of as overflow, we kind of uh, bring out a couple or three uh, of our vintage machines to, that are they're just here for aesthetics, right? Yep, just here to look at. And you chose these three because uh, they're they're really just my favorite to yeah. look at. Well, I, I don't I don't quite that. This is they're, they're beautiful and I, I love them too. So we do use the three hundred one um, a a lot. Um, you use this one as much as any vintage machine we have, right? I do. Yep, it's just a little workhorse. I love that machine. Yeah, really cool. So anyway, that is the gist of our cabinet storage area. So let's take you into my sewing room and I'll show you where the rest of the vintage machines live. Okay guys, so this is kind of the second part of our machine storage. And um, in my room here, what we've done, uh, this is kind of how we get away with having so many machines is we've gone vertical. And so there's nothing special. Uh, this is uh, just kind of a run of the mill set of um, storage shelves. I think we got them from, was it Home Depot or Lowe's? Lowe's. Lowe's, okay. So um, no big deal, but they're plenty strong and sturdy and they hold um, as many machines as you can fit on them without any problems. So this is like another 15 or 16 machines uh, that we keep here. And uh, again, I like them all nice and straight. That keeps me happy and, and, and my brain working right. But uh, I love how they look when I walk in. They all have their own little story and history and how how we attain them and, and, and they're all um, they're all special and neat. I like being able to have them out also when I want to work on one or make a video about one or I want to sew with one. Well, they're just they're right here accessible and easy to grab and easy to use. So um, this is how we uh, manage to um, to have uh, so many machines in our little home in this little 10 by 10 room that really feels bigger than it is because of the way it's organized. So that's the, the second part of our sewing machine storage. Now, the rest of these shelves kind of goes into the next category, which is the, um, the materials organization and storage. And um, Stacy has done an amazing job of categorizing and separating all of our um, fabrics into colors and, and textures and kinds and whatnot. And we are really, really big believers in bins. Uh, bins just make everything better. They keep everything dust free and clean and out of the sun and um, organized and easy to get to and you can shuffle them around. And when we want to make something, if I want to make a blue quilt, we just come in here and get one that says blue and Stacy has got them just so nicely folded up and put into categories inside of each bin, right? And so, and you know, the amazing thing is, is that somehow you can tell where every piece of this fabric came from, can't you? I believe I can, yes. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. I don't know either. You know, between between here and under the bed and in the other rooms and in the attic and closets, we've probably got uh, thousands of pieces of uh, fabric and you seem to know where they all came from. It's, it's really quite a skill, but um, or a talent in any case. I don't know. It's more than I got, I can tell you that much for sure. So anyway, that is the second part there of our, our storage. Um, uh, situation so it works out really well for us and you know if you have room for something like this I would highly suggest trying to figure something like that out so uh, also you can see in the shot here is my uh, computer station nothing special but between the two of us we have three YouTube channels and this is where all the kind of the magic happens and all of the editing and uploading and, and analytics and and whatnot so um, nothing to write home about but this is kind of the bare bones of what you need to run some YouTube so that's that so this is the storage in here. That was the storage in the hallway. Let me uh, bring you around and we'll show you the rest of it. Okay, so as we come around the other side of my room here, you get to see the, uh, the kind of the end of the sewing machine storage that we've got. Um, I've got like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight more machines here um, outside of the couple that are in Stacy's room that are set up uh, for being used at the moment. This is kind of the end of the, of the road. And these, these kind of represent um, my favorite machines to look at and to have and to use. And uh, this is kind of where they live. You know? but I'll just have a, a vintage um, a cedar chest that they live on and a, a little work table. But, you know, they kind of wrap around into my workstation. And I just love having them out. Um, they, these all actually do have, um, you know, uh, a lid and a box and a handle and all that jazz. But, um, and I could store them like that. I know they probably stay a little less dusty and uh, better for wear and tear. But I just prefer having them out. And they all are kind of my friends, you know, and, and I walk in here and all the machines are all lined up and kind of looking at me and we're all kind of in this together, you know. To me, that's what makes my space fun and, and inspires me to make and build and, and, and maintain and, and, and create. And really that's what's most important in my mind uh, is your space needs to uh, provide um, all of that for you. And, and who knows what that means to you, 
I'm not here suggesting this is what your room should look like. You, you should find what makes you happy. But this is what makes me happy, having a bunch of sewing machines that are all lined up and looking good and maintained and ready to use. And it just makes me super happy. So that's kind of the end of, um, you know, our first category, which is sewing machine storage. Uh, and so that kind of brings us around to my workstation, which is kind of our second category of um, workflow and room layout. And so this is my kind of my station. And uh, as far as workflow goes, like as you can see here, this awesome FOF 360 that I'm getting ready to tear into and, and maintain. When we bring home a machine from a thrift store, uh, this is the first place it goes into the workflow. It gets torn down and it gets maintained and, and oiled and cleaned and lubed and whatever needs repaired and gets repaired. This one here has a broken uh, plug-in, so it's gonna get one of those right away so I can even turn it on and test it. And so um, this is an incredibly great station and place to work. And a really, really big reason why I love it, and I, if I can suggest anything to you out of this video, it's to uh, get yourself set up with really good work tables. This is a great table because one, it's adjustable height, standing height, sitting height, whatever you need. Two, it's on wheels, caster wheels, that makes it easy to move around. Three, it's got a built-in plug-in with USB chargers on it as well. If you can make sure that you have your tables accomplishing all three of those things, you're gonna be mobile and agile and fragile. Man, you're gonna be able to do whatever you need to do, move it around. If I need to set up an L station, an L-shaped uh, workstation in here, if I need, just need to get it out of the way, if, what, if I need to stand up and work, whatever needs to happen, this table is absolutely gonna do it for me. And when I'm not maintaining a machine, um, I just clear it off. I pull off this piece of cardboard that I've cut to keep it clean. I then have a nice, clean, new, nice, plenty good sized um, table that I can sew on. And I do, I, I sew on this table in this space. And uh, like I made, I created this in here on this table in this space. Um, this was, um, you know, when I started my YouTube channel, I needed something as a backdrop and I didn't want to go out and buy art and I didn't, I just wasn't really connecting with that. So I thought, well, I'll just make something. So this is all made out of scraps that we had laying around. And it was really my first foyer into um, applique. And so I designed it all out and I, I went online and got clip art pictures of sewing machines, ran and de deconstructed it all into layers, ran it through the Cricut machine, little shapes, and I uh, applicated it all on with my um, Baby Lock Aspire machine that I use quite often uh, and, um, you know, worked it out. I'm still a beginner, and, but it was my first one and I'm, I'm really proud of it. That's why it's my backdrop because it makes me feel good and it makes me want to create and work in my space. And so this is, uh, this is the key for me is to create a space surrounded by what makes you happy. That's what makes me happy and I absolutely love it. And I am I'm, I'm pretty productive in this space. So last couple things about this, um, as far as layout and workflow, um, I chose when I wanted to set up in here, instead of a sewing stool or a, using my office chair from the other side of the room, I decided to go with a drum throne. I know it's a little unorthodox, but I absolutely love this. Um, it, it wasn't the cheapest, uh, and, it, and there's certainly um, more expensive options out there, but I love this as an option. It's set up for drummers whose legs are doing this all the time, and that's kind of what you're doing with your foot pedal too. So it's lightweight, it swivels super easy, and best of all, it has an air shock, so it's super comfy, and an adjustable height. So you can, with my adjustable height table, I can use whatever height I want. Um, it isn't something that everybody has or that everybody wants, but I absolutely love it. And the, the fabric on it is super nice and it's really cool looking. And you know, when you can walk in your sewing space and it makes you feel cool, even better. So that's what I use and I love it. So that's that. Um, and the last thing uh, that makes this room really, really uh, useful and great for me as far as workflow goes is this guy right here. A dedicated sewing room tool tote. So what happened was probably the 39th or 51st time that I ran out to the garage and stole tools out of there to come in here and work on sewing machines and then forgot they were here and then didn't have them out there when I needed them. I was like, enough. We, you know, I'm doing this enough that we, we need to have tools that live here um, and, and I want them to be mobile so I could take them from room to room or this really becomes the household tool set as well. So if we have a light fixture that needs worked on or a door or something across the house, we just have it here. It has everything a guy needs to maintain uh, sewing machines and electrical work and mechanical work and greasy work and cleaning and, uh, and diagnostics work and whatever you need. So this is nothing special. These are all really inexpensive tools. 
because sewing machines don't need heavy duty tools that you but you just need tools and it's a, just a real cheap harbor freight tool tote but it's open it's easy to use it's got pockets it, it folds down it's easy to easy to stow it's lightweight and it just stays right here and when i need a tool i know where to find it so the whole goal is to make it efficient and your workflow to be seamless and if it's not a hassle you have a much more uh like you're much more likely to do it whatever it is you know make it easy make it easy to get to make it easy to store make it easy to find and declutter your space and organize your space and you can accomplish an immense amount that's my space and i've really uh i've really enjoyed showing it to you it's 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 a lot of fun so anyway uh i'm kind of the storage and maintenance guy around here uh the real magic happens in stacy's room so let's get you over there and i'll show you what's going on there okay guys so here we are in stacy's room now and this is like i say where all the magic really happens um this room uh took us a while to get set up it didn't happen overnight uh, probably uh, maybe a year in the making probably and um so We've spent a lot of time and energy um, analyzing and theorizing and, and budgeting and trying to figure out what, what, what is the ultimate goal and dream for Stacy here to have her dream sanctuary of a sewing room. Um, she, she worked for years uh, in, in, on the kitchen table and in the bedroom and on folding tables and, 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 and on old you know, junky machines and proved that she was you know, worthy of a new machine and worthy of a new space and worthy of her own craft room. And it just kind of kept building and building. And then we started our YouTube channel and it just, it's just blossomed and, and it just shows what, what happens when you put your mind to something and, and follow your dreams. And so this room is the culmination of that. And we're just super proud of it. Um, hopefully uh, what we show you guys, how what we figured out in here, like my room, maybe you guys can glean some information from it. And if you're trying to figure out how to set up your sewing space, um, maybe this will work out for you. So um, there's a lot going on in here. Uh, and this is not a big room, um, but it, the funny thing is when anybody comes in the room for the first time, they always say the same thing, right? It's, wow, how much space you have, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so for sure. It's just because we keep it clean and organized and open and efficient and laid out really well and efficiently. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. There's a lot going on in here. Let's take it one piece at a time. So the first thing I think that we ought to show here is this awesome... Uh, probably the best investment we've made and really would you say the biggest game changer um, for sure in this yes. in this whole room yeah. is this husky toolbox um, it, again it's mobile and agile it is big but you can move it around one person can move it it's got a centrally located set of uh, plugins with um, with USB the coolest part uh, is that if you don't have room for it or you need to fold it away you can push in these legs the whole from here over this whole half a leaf folds down and you can push it back into the corner or rotate it around or get into another room or whatever you need to do. But it pretty much stays like this in this corner of the room and it has a dedicated cutting and an ironing station and we just leave it like this uh, for the workflow, right? So yeah. I can be working on a project, you can be working on a project and we don't get on top of each other and we can both kind of get in and out of here and stay out of each other's way. And you notice in my room, I don't have a cutting station and I don't have an ironing station. If you... There are times when you've had huge projects going on and I'm wanting to do stuff. I fold out a table and put our little travel iron and our travel cutting station and I'll, I can do an entire project in my room, but mm -hmm. I'd much prefer to work in here. It's a lot more ergonomic. It's a lot more um, utilitarian and efficient, right? Yeah, so for sure. This has been great. I love it. Um, why don't you kind of tell people what works for you and why you why you love it? Why I love it. Yeah. Well, the first thing I love is the size of the tabletop. Uh, when it is folded out like this, uh, full length, it does allow for you to have a completely separate cutting station and ironing station. Mm -hmm. As David said, um, it's great when we want to do something together. He can be over there ironing, I can be over here cutting, and we're not getting in each other's way, um, and vice versa. Um, you know, before, I think we were putting our ironing mat on our cutting station, and, um, you know, we had a much smaller table there. and we had some pin cushions and a light yeah. right here. Yeah. And then when you want to switch to cutting, you got to clean it all off and reorganize, rearrange. So just having dedicated uh, spaces for those has just been a huge game changer there. Awesome. Having the iron, uh, being able to plug it in right here centrally is great. Um, so that's, you know, the tabletop has been just, just the best thing ever. But the really cool thing about this is are these drawers. Um, these are just, 
amazing. This big uh, full length drawer here is just the best real estate of the whole room. This is our thread storage. It is such a huge drawer and so deep that it allows that we can put all of our thread in here, have it all nicely organized by a kind of thread, a color of thread, and uh, we've got all the serger stuff in here, and we've got all the needles uh, nicely tucked away in one spot, so that's super handy. And then over on the left, uh, there's enough room left here for all of our bobbin storage. We have all of the bobbins organized by kind of machine that they belong to. So just uh, having a space big enough to keep everything organized and uh, just tucked away nicely, uh, can close it up and it stays dust free. It's just been wonderful. So and those are self-closing drawers, are they not? Yeah, they are. I believe really so. Nice. Yeah. They don't slam shut. You don't have to force them. They don't come oh, up yeah. by themselves. They stay shut. And they're super high quality feeling. Yeah. They're just, they're awesome. You get what you pay for in this game, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So uh, how we have had the rest of these drawers organized, I'll just show you real quick. Uh, this is David's favorite drawer. This is the doodad drawer. Kind of love doodads. Oh yeah, for sure. So anytime we bring home a vintage machine, uh, usually it'll come with a bunch of doodads and, and a little book or whatever. So we just keep all of the uh, books and manuals in here for each machine. And then we've got uh, all of the boxes kind of uh, organized. If we want to sew on the foff, we just grab the foff box and we've got all the feet and everything ready for that. So yeah. uh, that's really cool. It just allows us to keep everything all in one spot. We know where it's at. It's always going to be there for us. So easy to grab stuff. It is. That makes great. it so you nice see, to get work done. You know where it's at when you need it. It's amazing. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and I love that these drawers are kind of low profile. So this is my pattern drawer and it's just, you know, a lot of patterns in there. I can store a ton of them in there, but they uh, they just stay all nice and neat for me. I've got a cutting drawer. This is all of my cutting uh, tools in there. It's wonderful. This is just a miscellaneous tool drawer. Um, you know, with all the vintage machines we brought home, they all kind of come with a couple screwdrivers for some reason. We have an we've abundance of little tiny screwdrivers. We've probably got 20 or more I would drivers. say so, yeah. This is just a small portion of our tiny Yeah, I've taken some of them into the garage because <laughs> yeah. I can use them on motorcycles and stuff. And it's just like, I mean, we don't need that many Yeah, I saw screwdrivers. that you had one of my Singer screwdrivers out there. Yeah, well, it's the only one that fits on for carburetor adjustments. So, yeah, it works out great. <laughs> That's great. I, I got like eight of them. So. I know. You're, you're looking good. <laughs> it's great. So, miscellaneous tools. And uh, these uh, big, uh, deep drawers, this is where I store all of my batiks. I kind of like to keep batiks separate from my other quilting fabric. I don't know why the batiks are just really special to me. Uh, so I kind of just like to keep them separate. So I have batik yardage in one drawer, and then these are all of the smaller cuts, fat quarters, things like that. And uh, they're all kind of color coded, and I just think they're super pretty and it just makes me happy every time I open these drawers and see all the pretty colors and pretty fabrics. So having your fabric lined up and color coded and oh, organized yeah. makes you happy the way that having all the sewing machines lined up and on display makes me happy. Absolutely. And so it's a totally different it. deal. It's super inspiring. But it's the same me. concept. Yep. You yeah. found what makes you happy in your space. I found what makes me happy in my space. Mm -hmm. I don't have as much uh, of an attachment to fabric. Oh man, I'm super attached to it. <laughs> you, you probably have as much attachment to sewing machines as I do. Yeah. But one of us had to take the sewing machines, and so yeah, you know, it, it just worked out great. Yeah. So for this sure. whole enterprise really is Stacy's gig. I'm nah. just, I'm just a, I'm just a squirrel <laughs> in her tree. I mean, this really is all her gig. So and she deserves it. She's, she just Thank does you. an amazing job, uh, as you can see from just the stuff on the walls and the, the videos she makes. It's this is really. This really was her deal. I just kind of jumped on the bandwagons because um, I like collecting stuff and I like working on sewing machines, but. She's really the star of the show here, so really That's cool. awesome. Thank yeah. you. So, you, All right. you love your table, right? I love it. Uh, that's our Husky Toolbox. Yep. So, yeah, okay. we so, just absolutely love it. This was really cool. This is a great deal. Um, so, let's move on to the next gig. And I think the next uh, the next thing we want to show you is probably what most people think of as the eyesore of their room, which is the closet. The closet. Right? Yeah. So, for us, it's actually a really <laughs> cool space, and we've, we've made the best of it, and maybe we can kind of inspire you to take and declutter your closet and use it into, turn it into a usable space that might help you with your workflow and your storage uh, needs for your room. So uh, let's get you turned around and uh, we'll show you what our closet looks like. 
All right, so here we are at the closet side of my sewing room. And, you know, a lot of times the closet is kind of the messy area. People kind of just want to pull the curtain and not deal with what's going on in here. But I kind of view this as an extension of my sewing room. So I want to keep it open. I want to keep it organized and clean so I know where everything is all the time and I can get to it very easily. So this is a very basic rack of shelves that we found at Walmart and these are just Walmart bins. It's not expensive by any means at all and everything here is just neatly organized. I can see what's in the bin. Most of these are UFOs. I get bored kind of easy working on a project so I like to have a bunch of different projects kind of going at the same time. So I can just come here, I can see what's in it, pull it out and just kind of work on it for a little bit and when I'm done I just put it back here and I'm good to go. So uh, this has really been a game changer for this room, I'll tell you what. And you know my husband, he loves bins, he's a little OCD, loves to stay organized, so I credit him for uh, helping me get this all set up. So this has just been awesome for my room. And uh, keeping the shelves in the middle here has allowed for extra storage on each side. I've got more bins. Uh, here and I can hang things on the, the closet right here. I've got bins up above as well. They're all see-through so I know what's in them and I can get to them very easily. So uh, that is pretty much the closet. I love it. It's just been wonderful. And uh, last but not least, this is where I store my batting. So there's just a perfect slot right there next to my shelves for the batting. So that's that. Um, that's our closet. We'll turn you around and look at the rest of the room. Okay guys, so this is kind of the final uh, piece of the puzzle here and what really kind of uh, makes this room work is these last three main pieces here which is our awesome design board and these two matching Husky uh, work tables. Uh, all of these things kind of finish out and create um, the workspace that we have, uh, the ergonomics and the efficiency and the layout, it, it just all works out just wonderful. We had this room laid out in a bunch of different configurations. This is the one that works the best, but they're all on wheels. Everything in here moves around easily. We constantly move stuff around, but this is what we always kind of land on, right? Mm -hmm. This is how you like to sew in here, right? Exactly. This nice L-shaped situation, right? Yep, for sure. Perfect. So uh, first off, the, the big deal here, honestly, is this design board. I didn't even know a design board existed. I, I mean, what is a design board? I didn't know. You were hauling fabric back and forth to the bedroom, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, and, right? And so you were like, oh, I need a design board. And I was like, oh, that sounds a lot like something I have to build. For sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, fine. I'll, I'll do a design board. Whatever. So we're good. So this is not This was easy to build. It's cheap. No big deal. Foam board and some flannel, whatever. Uh, and um, But it's great. As you can see, stacy has got this awesome, uh, huge quilt on it. It just sticks to it, and it works, and she can design things and work it out. Um, and when she's not using it, I've, uh, I have put a couple quilts together and I've used it. It's been great. I absolutely love it. The tables, um, again, they're not the cheapest option, but they match our, our toolbox. Height adjustable on wheels. I've got power run to them. They've got drawers. It, it's just a, a wonderful um, ergonomic setup. So, you know, what does what is, what is this corner of the room and, and these aspects mean to you, and, and what have they done for you? Well, not only is this my favorite room in the house, this is my favorite area <laughs> right here. So this is where this is where I get stuff done. So like David said, this is just a one inch foam board from Home Depot. Right. Um, and it is covered with flannel. I happened to find a 108 flannel on sale at Joann's. So we covered it uh, with that. And it has just been, like he said, an absolute game changer. Yeah. I, I was literally laying out all my quilts on the bed and on the floor. And I even laid out one quilt on a card table and it didn't get sewn together properly because uh, I didn't have a design board. Yeah. So yeah, That's huge, really huge game changer here for this. And uh, we oh, also had some scraps absolutely. here. Do you want to grab that? Yeah. So this was really cool. I used the heck out of this thing. Uh, this is kind of, you can kind of see, this is just a, like a Pink Panther uh, you know, foam board with flannel that we glued on. but. This turned out, we didn't even know this was going to be a thing, but we had a, yeah. we had scraps off of the a drop off of our foam board project. And uh, we ended up with a two by two scrap, or actually a couple of them, but yeah. we took this scrap and a scrap of flannel from the project and glued this up. And this ends up being a mobile design board that, mm -hmm. again, things just stick to it. And 
You can use it however you need to do. But what I do, since I sew in my room a lot, I can, if, if Stacy is in here with this huge project and she's taking up all the tables, I can sew and have like a quilt in my room. I can just come in here and grab this and lay out all my blocks and rows or strips or whatever I'm doing and it helps keep me straight. I, I, if I don't have it laid out, I have a hard time kind of envisioning it. I'm not as good at it as you are at, but um, this thing's mobile and I can just take it, it's lightweight and set it up next to my machine and just grab things as I need them and use them. And man, what an awesome unseen uh, benefit that we didn't mm -hmm. know came from this. But just, yeah. It's a really handy little tool. So really, really, even if you don't build yourself one of these and have it in your room, you can go to Home Depot and get drops of these like two by four or mm -hmm. two by two or four by four, however they sell them. You can buy scraps of these. If you can buy this size, I'm sure, two by two. Get a little scrap of flannel, a little glue, and make yourself one or two of these, and this will improve your efficiency and workflow immensely. It yeah, has. it's perfect for laying out the pieces of your block and then just taking it right over to your yeah. sewing machine and sew your little pieces together. I, it's I just been it. great. I absolutely love it. Yep, for sure. So the other uh, side over here are these tables that David uh, mentioned. Now, this is where my main uh, quilting machine lives. Uh, this is where I do most of my free motion, all of my free motion quilting really on this. These tables are absolutely wonderful. They're height adjustable. Uh, they have an adjustment right over here and they have got uh, these nice, big, long, shallow drawers that uh, are great for like rulers. Um, I was kind of having a little bit of a hard time figuring out how to store all of these different sized rulers. I've got tiny rulers all the way up to these big huge rulers and this is just awesome um i can just you know slide them right in here and they're all in one spot again all where we know to grab them makes it so anytime easy anytime we need them yeah it's great i i just can come in here if i need a ruler i know exactly where, to, where they're at they're it's just great. always in the right place yep for they're not, sure they're not buried under other stuff and we're not you know it, it, it's just that everything has its place everything has a place and they don't share you know yeah. everything if you want rulers you know don't store ufos on top of them mm -hmm. you know what exactly I mean? and, and so, the key is putting your tool back to into yeah. the right place where it goes when, when you're done, done using it, it. That's, <laughs> right. that's right <laughs> yeah absolutely. Lessons, right? absolutely you don't do that when you're young like, we're all people now and yeah, we, we figure that out eventually yeah for, for sure. sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So this other drawer is just a great spot for me to keep all of the tools that I use right here. Yeah. I don't have to go over to the toolbox to grab any extra tools. The handful of things that I need right here are just always right here. Right. So that's that. Um, they are on wheels, so we can literally roll them over to this big toolbox and uh, adjust it up to the same height as that and make that tabletop even bigger. It's just, it's yeah, been great. If you rotate this around that way and put it end to end, it's a nine foot table. Yeah. And when I made my seven foot wall hanging in there, I used this. I remember. I was able to you know, lay out the entire thing uh, and do the binding and all that with all mm -hmm. the clips and never had to fight space. Yeah, it, was it, was, it was absolutely perfect. And we still had room to walk around in here yeah, and work yeah. at the same time. It was awesome. It was perfect. Yeah, yeah. so cool. Yeah, and I love having it in an L shape. Um, I can kind of just move this out of the way if I need to, but when I'm here working, I can reach things over on this table. And when David needs an extra sewing space, he's got this space right here. He can come in here and sew in here if he wants to. Yeah, because so. I can sit on the other side and it becomes a dual exactly. station. Yeah. And we're not in each other's way. Exactly. Because that way I can come in and I, with just two steps, I can do my ironing and cutting mm -hmm. while she's doing it. And we just take turns at the station. I mean, we could, we could have four people in here. I mean, it's... it's we've got it's, enough room, yeah. It's only like a 12-foot room, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's just the way it's laid out. It's just super efficient and ergonomic. Yeah, I just great. I'm just super happy with it. And it, we don't... Now that we've laid it out and we've bought all the stuff and we've got it all set up, we don't really have to buy anything else or set it up. We're done. We're done, This yeah. setup will last years. Yeah, this will be my sewing setup for many, many years to come, for yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. Super cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, one other thing. Uh, these tables do, do not have power like, like the toolbox. Mm -hmm. So we just went to Harbor Freight and bought a power strip, magnetic power strip. I love that they're metal. Anything magnetic just sticks to them. So I've the got a power strip right here uh, that we can, you know, plug the machines cool? in and... All that good stuff. So just sits right underneath. So when we yep. set the machine, it goes right under here and it plugs in. Yep. Yeah. And anything magnetic, we can stick to them anywhere. So yeah, it's been arcs, great. Holders. Mm -hmm. Anything. Yep. It's a benefit sure. of using metal for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right.
You're cool. Yeah. All right. So anyway, this is our space. Uh, we love it, and we really appreciate you guys coming along, and we've had a lot of fun showing it to you guys. And Super fun. You know, our goal is to spread the love and share what we have figured out and, um, you know, hopefully, it, it, you know, this doesn't need to be what your space looks like. Mm -hmm. Usually, your space should look completely different than our space. Yeah. But your this, space needs to look how you want it to look. Yeah. But this is how we want ours to look. And we are just super happy with it. And we're just blessed and fortunate. And uh, I'm really happy to bring you guys along with it. So I think that's our tour for today. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And remember, when it comes to sewing machines, you can never have too many. Yeah. See you next time.